Welcome back to Korra Season 3, which begins with Bay Fong trying to keep Korra safe from the quartet of bad guys that are after her. And serendipity, there's a report of a new airbender at Zhao Fu, home of the Metal Clan. They ought to be safe there. Bay Fong doesn't like that idea, but she really likes anything. I rest my case. Wow, wow, wow! An entire city made of metal! Well, they land and Bei Fong insists that she's staying here and don't tell anyone she's arrived. Nothing weird about that. Let's go. It's weird. I know, but it sounds like backstory. We've got stuff to do. They're met by what looks like a scholar, Ai Wei. And speaking of guests, Air Temple Island is getting new airbenders, including this guy with the shaved head. Ooh, the composer does not approve of him. Back in Zhao Fu, they see a huge statue of Toph. But she left some time ago and hasn't returned, so maybe she doesn't like it. At least it wasn't a mirror, though. That would have gone down rather poorly. The likeness is astonishing, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't know. Su Yin is the matriarch in charge, busy practicing metal-bending dance routines. She's curious to know why Kor lied that no one else was here but the four of them. Seems Ai Wei is a truth seer. Thanks to Ai Wei, there are no secrets in our city. That is not the happy thought you make it sound like. Turns out Sue is Lin Bei Fong's sister. Half sister. Same mom, different dads. Really? Oh, Toph, you dirty dog. That metal bending brings all the boys to the yard. Hmm. Sue and Bei Fong have not spoken directly in 30 years, and. Oh, yeah, for simplicity, I'm just going to continue to call Lin Beifong. That's what I've done in the past, and so it just makes sense to stick with the same name for consistency. Sue says this entire estrangement is Beifong's fault because she wanted Beifong to come out here so that they could talk things through and was never willing to. Well, it's a good thing she's here now, right? That means that finally a golden opportunity has presented itself. And Sue can take Bei Fong aside, and the two can quietly work through their problems and resolve this like she's wanted so much because reconciliation is so important to her. And by of course, I mean, they're going to go watch her kids fuck around. Wow, that's a really nice banana. I just add a bowler hat and we can call it Son of Potassium. Inspired by harmonic convergence, it represents the dawning of a new age. Obviously. Oh, that obviously? That's going to cost you, Banana Man. Oh, yeah, you're stuck with that name now. Shape me some fruit, you're the Banana Man. Oh, and just for the record, I think that abstract 3D art can be downright soul-moving. Bird in space is sublime. And I freely confess I was almost brought to tears by Endless Column, and none of that is sarcasm. The reason I feel comfortable trashing Banana Man is that in my experience, when admiring 3D abstract art, First you look at it, then you ask, what is it called? And then you ask, what is it saying? Examining it first lets you see it through your own eyes, then the title helps recontextualize it more. And then once you've done that, saying, what is it saying, isn't saying, I don't understand it. It's saying, I want to understand it more. Yeah, of course, there's also plenty of crap out there, don't get me wrong. Banana Man here is probably, at best, still just developing. And that, obviously, you throw in there, proves it. He may one day have talent, but it's doubtful he has any right now. I mean, yes, technically, anything an artist makes is art. But then again, remember that Plan 9 from Outer Space is art, too. Sometimes art is just bad. Now, the other end of the spectrum from the Banana Man is his sister Opal, who is the new airbender and seems really sweet. Sue thinks that this is great, except the part of going to the air temple. Screw that, Kor can just train Opal right here instead. Though she will be missing out. You call yourself an airbender? Disgraceful! Well, at least it's just until they get to see Tenzin. I'm sure he'll make it easier on them. New guy makes it through just fine, though, but he's disappointed that Korra won't be at the Northern Air Temple when they all head up there to meet Tenzin. No, she's having dinner with Sue, but not hubby. You're the best. That was my brilliant architect of a husband. He made our sex swing. 
Fortunately, they just told the kids it was a work of art. Ride of the Ruby Ring. Opal is floored by Bolin. His life is so full, and while things are great here, there's no real particular excitement to it. Things are complicated at the far end of the table because Sue has strong opinions she likes sharing, and Beifong has a passive aggressiveness that wears brass knuckles. Fortunately, someone comes to the rescue. Sorry we're late, everyone. Varric is so awesome, he can even end this squabbling. Of course, it's by starting new ones, but you gotta take the win. Varric's heading up my new technology division. I've seen the future, and the future is... Magnets. I like it. Tell me more. Beifong is outraged that there's a criminal here, but it seems Varric isn't the only one. Sue likes giving people second chances. Sue tells Korra that back in the day she was a rebel while Beifong followed in Toph's footsteps. That wording was very deliberate. Toph basically let the girls do what they liked, given the way her parents had been so domineering. But as a result of her bad parenting... Emphasis, again, chosen specifically. They fought constantly, and Sue went off to have grand adventures and finally bought this land and built this place using the money inherited from Toph's parents. I mean, good on her. This is a nice place. There's just one fly in the ointment of perfection, though. It sounds like you've created the perfect life here. Almost. I've always wanted Lynn to be a part of it, but I gave up hope long ago of her ever coming around. That phrasing, again, is very deliberate. Let's just save that for later. Well, Bolin realizes that while Opal is not his usual type, mover stars and psycho ice queens, she is quite a catch, and so decides to make his move. You know, much like the same way Custer made his move. Thankfully, this is a one-scene problem, and Opal is able to get him to sort his shit out and act normal, which is what she likes, and not moves just short of, Hey, babe, are you an earthbender? Because part of me is turning to stone. Meanwhile, on Air Temple Island, the new guy heads into Tenzin study to find an amulet with the poem by that guy who could supposedly fly. Iki finds him and soon is joined by Kaya, who eventually realizes this is actually Zahir. So they fight, then they fight, then they fight, then they fight, but even with the benders from the White Lotus, he triumphs and escapes. Back in the Metal City, Korra tries firing Opal's adorableness at Bei Fong, who is unmoved. She tells her to get out, and when Opal doesn't, repeats it in a loud voice. Korra is peeved because she, having the patience of Veruca Salt, didn't magically fix an entire lifetime of problems with one brief conversation. What's your problem? Exactly. What's your problem? Probably should have been the question to ask first before you presume to meddle with things, you moron. Maybe after rejecting your mentor and your father so you could further the ambitions of the dictator trying to destroy the world, you should have paused and reflected. Perhaps my capacity to judge people in situations isn't quite as well developed as I thought, and I shouldn't deploy the myopic bullheaded approach which defines the collection of fuck-ups that I call a life at every single thing I laughingly presume my shiny's distracted brain can understand. Just a suggestion. Sue's right. You're never going to change. You're always going to be a bitter, lonely woman. Yeah, you seem to have done a lot to contribute to the solution, thanks. Having Cora try to solve an interpersonal problem is a bit like trying to solve a dirty stained glass window with a rock. Well, let's see where things go in episode 6. Let me stand here. Yes, I can see that now. Yes. Thank you. Banana. I mean, that's a banana, right? 